So first of all, Cam, congratulations on being nominated into the PFA Scotland Championship Team of the Year. How did that feel to be nominated into the team by players in the in the division? Yeah, you know, it's a it's a privilege to be in that position. Obviously, I was nominated in it last year as well, and that was a very different season for the club. We're obviously pushing towards promotion last year and this year. We've been in a relegation fight for most of the season, you know. And as a team, we didn't we didn't win for three months, and that was a real difficult difficult time. And I think it's it's always a privilege that fellow professionals, uh, you know, notice your performances and you know vote you into the team. And obviously, we had Rory in the team from Queens as well. And I think it's uh, it's a nice it's a nice way to end the season for me personally. Obviously, we managed to stay up, avoid the playoffs, and then get voted into that. You know, in what was a very difficult season at times, uh, it means a lot. And th- th- do you think that says a lot? The fact that you have had a challenging season, and despite that, as a goalkeeper, you were you were recognised for your standout performances. Well, I think it, it, it's always difficult in in, in teams where you're maybe near the bottom, you maybe a bit busier than you want to be, and things like that. And there's no on. There's been fantastic goalkeepers in the league this season. You know, you could could have been three, four, five goalkeepers could have been in that team of the year. You know, I'm just very privileged that uh, uh, people vote for me, really. And can you tell us a little bit about your studies? So we're aware that, that you're studying alongside your full-time football. Yeah, no, I started a uh, Master's in Performance Psychology from Bangor University in North Wales uh, last September now. So I've just coming up to finish my first year. Just got one more essay to submit and then I've got a, a wee break. So it's something that I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, psychology is something that I've always wanted to do and probably would have wanted to do a degree in it but I've never found a online degree that I could do and could fit around the football you know it's not something that Open Uni offered and then I saw this Masters from from Bangor Uni and it was a full distance learning and luckily enough they took my uh, professional history as a footballer as you know instead of an undergraduate degree took the work experience for that so they allowed me to go on it and it's been it's been brilliant it's been been really challenging at times fitting it in around in and around football, but it's been real enjoyable, and it's something that uh, I've really enjoyed doing over this last last ten months. Even though it has been stressful, it's been worthwhile in my opinion. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the support you've received from PFA Scotland this time, and and how they helped you approach um, the studies? Yeah, obviously I was ch- at touch base with uh, Chris and uh, Craig B at, at the PFA just to sort of see what support I would receive from that, and then they showed me courses that I could potentially do and things like that, and. Obviously, I found this one, and I said, you know, would this be something that I'd be able to get funding for? And there, perhaps something I'll get at the end of this year, and I'll do it yearly to to get a little bit of funding back. And it just makes it a bit more viable for me to be able to do it, because obviously it is a lot of money, and it's a big commitment. And knowing that that support's going to be there year to year, you know, it, it's a big part of it for me, and being able to do it. I'm sure you, you've probably connected with fellow professionals who maybe have similar ambitions to, to study um, alongside their football. What, what would be your message to them in terms of your experience and uh, and maybe how that can help them moving forward. Yeah, I think I think it's just understanding that it, it is going to be difficult and it is quite hard to juggle juggle a lot of things at once. And I think we all as footballers don't want to, our football to suffer. And I think sometimes before we start doing one of these things, we can maybe overthink it and think, you know, if I do this and spend so much time on this, then my football's going to suffer. But a lot of the time, you know, I've done a few courses over the years, and you know it. I actually find them really beneficial in terms of bring, sometimes bringing my focus away from football when I'm at home and allowing me to switch off. And then when I am at football, I can enjoy it a wee bit more and I can really enjoy it. I think a lot of players and a lot of boys can suffer a wee bit from burnout. You know, we've been playing football every day of our lives since the age of six, seven, eight years old. And although it's a fantastic job and it's amazing, I think a lot of boys can suffer from that burnout. And I think just having a wee, you know, even just a couple hours, few hours every night or every other night doing and focusing on something else it can sometimes uh, bring the performance level up which is what I found and obviously you, you've had a, a successful season season individually um, but do, do you have ambitions to, to continue the study um, further afield or, or, or after your career yeah I think I've obviously got two two years left of this master's degree and then after that it's it was sort of just to keep my options open it's obviously something that like if I wanted to go into coaching, management, anything like that, or even into a business business area, it's something that I can transition into that. There's a lot of focus on, you know, how to get the performance best out of people, whether that's in sport, whether that's in business, whether that's in a, a military capacity or things like that. I think it's it's something that keeps my options open. And I think we all know how uh, employers view people who have 
degrees or higher education, it can always get you a, a foot in the door and then you can do the rest. So I think it's something that it keeps my options open because by the time I finish it, I think I'll only be, you know, 28, 28. So I'll still hopefully have potentially 10, 12 years left in, in me as a goalkeeper, maybe even more. But we'll just have to see, see what happens then. It, it's helpful in keeping my options open of what I want to do in the future, for sure. And is there any elements at all from this master's degree that you've found that has, has benefited your, your professional career so far in terms of since you've began the studies? Um, I think definitely. I think it's there's so many aspects of it that I can translate into a football football field. I think a lot of the focus on some of the uh, essays and things like that is I've used it to apply what I've been learning into the football field. And although it is you know very theoretical a lot of the time, it's it's uh, really interesting how how you can see that translating into myself and teammates and things like that. And then also into our training sessions, you know, with my goalkeeper coach, I'm always talking about him, how we can get the most out of training sessions and things like that. And if, you know, I can add a bit of something from my degree and he finds it really interesting and we can work together and get the best out of ourselves and, you know, the players around us, hopefully it helps. And more generally, just around the, the support from PFA Scotland, whether that be from Chris or, or from Craig or any other staff that, that come to the club visits, what are the sort of things that, that you and, and your teammates pick up from those visits and, and sort of know how to how to sort of seek that support? Well, I think it's it's something which is, I always say to other boys at the club that it's, you know, it's there if you need it. But, you know, I also encourage boys to make sure that you can maximise the benefits and maximise what's being brought to you. You know, there's a lot of courses on offer. And as I said, especially as sort of younger professionals who maybe don't have families, don't have kids yet, you know, who's got a lot of spare hours in the evenings, a lot of spare hours at the weekends. You know, there's no reason why the courses that the PFA Scotland offer and uh, push forward, we shouldn't be looking at taking them up. And I know a few boys have, and a lot of boys have done stuff like that. I think it's important that, you know, they they keep uh, seeing that that's been presented to them. And I think that's very important for the PFA Scotland. That it's brilliant that they do that because boys can then, they see what's available to them. And it gives them that wee little bit of push that they will maybe not think about just when they're sat in the house by themselves, you know, it gives them that little something to do. So, yeah, Calm, I'd, I'd previously spoke to Michael Devlin about the Applied Football Management course, and, and he gave me some good context in terms of how that's helped him understand the hierarchy of a football club and, and maybe what elements are involved in a, a day-to-day basis. How do you think being part of that course benefited you? I think it was really interesting sort of seeing the bigger picture in terms of football clubs. I think as players, you can be very... Uh, or is it tunnel tunnel visioned in terms of your own performance, your own day to day, and then you know sometimes when decisions are made, whether that's for you, against you, or for or against other people, it's sometimes hard to understand why that's being done. And I think from you know from just that point of view, I think it gave me a real oversight and a bigger picture of the day to day decision making that may go on at a club and the reasons behind those decisions that are being made. Because I know a lot of times in football. It, it does seem that just random things happen for random reasons and there's not much, you know, thought process behind it. But what it does is it really showed that bigger picture and helps understand it and then allows me to apply that in my day-to-day so that I can get a bigger understanding and then, you know, sometimes look at the bigger picture and how that can help me going forward as a player, for sure. And again, speaking to Michael, um, he really enjoyed the, the course just in terms of the delivery um, the camaraderie between all the participants on the course. I, again, is that something that you felt throughout? Yeah, no, it's brilliant. I was really fortunate that I was doing it with uh, obviously Stevie, C. Robson, who ran the course, was fantastic and gave such great insight. And obviously, I still keep in contact with him every so often and see him every so often, you know, at games and things like that. And I was lucky enough that Peter Grant was doing the course at the same time with me at Queen's, so we had each other to bounce off. Because at times it is difficult fitting it in and doing the work and things like that. but. I think if you can really see the application into your own world, it makes it so much easier. You know, it's not a false thing for us. We are living what we're learning there. And it's interesting to see how that can be applied into a you know, a more theoretical space and then how we can then bring that back in to improve our own performances and also prepare ourselves if we did want to stay in, you know, management in football or coaching in football beyond our career. But it also gives, you know, key management skills and key coaching skills if you just wanted to go into any workplace and any any walk of life really after football it's all important and all all very valuable and it sounds like there's, there's probably a bit of overlap in terms of what you learn during the applied football management course and, and potentially with your your masters in psychology just now what have you maybe identified in terms of where those two things align 
I think probably the biggest thing is obviously the subjects are quite different, but then it's it, it's really how to learn. I think it's it's almost a skill being able to learn, you know, and how to do unions, know what the lecturers want, and how to write an essay, how to present a presentation. You know, that's a big thing that I think we did a couple of presentations that we had to present with Stevie on that course, and then obviously I think the first two out of three of my uh, assignments were presentations that you had to write and then present and you just make up a presentation which you know a lot of people haven't done since they were school kids you know so it's important that it just refreshed and kept my kept my hand into that sort of learning learning environment that I could then carry into this uh, the performance psychology degree. So it sounds as if being part of that course for the applied football management it was almost created a foundation for you to then kick on into into your master's would that feed into the theory of what you were saying previously in terms of having that message for young players that they, they just take the chance and um, see if you can upskill on something because you don't know what you might like, what you might enjoy and, and just get a spark from somewhere? Yeah, I think it, it, we've all got to be realistic about, you know, our careers. It's, it's in football. It could end, you know, after a season. We don't don't tend to get long-term contracts. We don't tend to get a lot of security. And, you know, if we got a lot of spare time, which I know I did when I was... I think I did three, probably about three courses. I think I did the Spanish course, the applied management. I did another psychology through University of Derby. So I was always trying to see what I could, almost through boredom really, you know, I'd just getting bored in the evenings and things like that and wanting to do something that actually gives you that sense of sense of purpose and a sense of achievement. Kind of a lot of boys, sometimes you go home, especially if you're living away from home, you train, you finish at two, three, whatever it is, you go home, you've got five, six, seven hours before bed. And sometimes you just sit there, you know, watching TV and you're thinking, I'm wasting so much, much of my day. And, you know, even if it is just a three month, four month or even a two week course, whatever it is, if it's upskilling, it's worth doing it, you know, especially with the support from the PFA with a lot of, a lot of the funding, you know, a lot of free courses that they, they put on. And it gives you that opportunity to, you know, discover what you enjoy and discover what you could potentially do after football, because you know, that could be a year, two years, three years. And if you're already on your way to preparing, you've you've saved yourself a wee bit of time after your career. 